about my third year in chiropractic, I realized, hey, this isn't a fluke. This isn't luck, right? And um, so I had a sense or a confidence that I could lead people towards health. But this this feels way this feels way bigger and, and, and like more exciting. And so if I did if I felt one way when I was in chiropractic and what we did there, then this feels even more amazing, even more powerful. It's you just know it's going to be it's going to be big. It's, it's going to be huge. Yes. So this is, this is the way it is. Everybody's waiting to get healthy in here. And so the, the difference is, well, what's going on here that's not going on someone else? There's, there's definite leadership going on. You know, I'm, I'm, people are taking responsibility over their health. That, that's a big thing. Too many people carry the weight of the shoulders of their health, meaning that they come to me to take care of their health. I can't take care of their health. They can. So I'm more of a thought leader. You know, I'm the, uh, I'm the conductor of the journey of them getting their health back and I'm kind of like their coach. So just like a coach, you ever have a coach and you hate your coach some days, like when they're making you run in the rain or do the push-ups or run the bleachers, but the day of the game when you win, you love your coach. So I, I kind of have to be that person. I got to love them. I love them. I always love them and I pour life into them. I don't let them speak death into their life because I'll, I'll, I'll call them out on that. And I push them when I have to push them and I'm empathetic when I have to be empathetic and to make that shift to get what they want because I, you know, I always got to put their goals in front of them. You want this, you want this, and if you want this, you need your health to be able to get there. So. What are you doing, Doc? Oh, back stiff from Justin, so I just, just do the wobble chair to kind of... Uh, we never like knowing something's wrong with us. We hate that. In fact, we go into denial about it. But I, I, the equivalent is putting your car up on a lift and seeing that your brake lines are leaking. You got seven nails in your tires. Like it's never convenient. You never want to. You never want to do it. You never want to deal with it. But when you do know about it, you're empowered to do something about it, right? So I could either let the the brake lines bleed and the nails in the tire. I could just leave them there and say, I'll, I don't have the time or the money. But the thing is, I'm gonna have to pay for it, right? It's gonna. I'm gonna have a tire blown. Something drastic and disastrous will happen that'll cost more time and money. And so that's why we show them the blind spots in the nervous system, and they they uh, they choose. I don't persuade people, I don't sell people, I don't close people. I tell them the truth, and they have to, I'll be their coach, and they have to choose to be well. The difference could be a little bit, but that little bit is the one that makes the huge thing in your life. So I wanna, I'll go over the differences of why maybe other things that you've tried didn't get you where you wanted to be, and then hopefully you'll, I'll be able to give you the hope going, yes, that, that, would, that was why. You just wanted to get well again. I just, you're not asking for much. You just wanna live a normal life. But you were actually told you were given something that is that is statistically researched to be the worst thing you can do for your health. You just want to be healthy. You were given the one thing that is actually the polar opposite. So if you want to be healthy and you're taking all these drugs to mask it, can you ever get healthy? No. Oh, you go to the Lambo store? That and this is his garage. I put him right in here and it works, but it works like it, but I got it. Oh, Ooh, that's yeah. right, dude. How do you feel? You feel strong? Yeah. That's what we want. Arm day. Arm day. Best day of the week. It's a holy day. No, Monday's, yeah, leg days are best day. Leg days are best day? Yeah. Arm day is this fun day. You're watching this and you write a note or, or PM or direct message that I'm getting it you know you have access to me and uh, all and my thing is just to I am I'm telling you Tim I am 100% all in for giving as much as possible like it's my that's my only focus right now my own my like I there's no that's I'm only focused on that and that that's my only concern right now so uh, hopefully people will see that's the truth always all right, let's do it So we're gonna go for it. It's not about planning it out. All you have to know is the next step. So the next step is this. We're doing the next step. I'm not gonna 
wait till everything's perfectly and planned out because it never, ever, ever happens the way you plan it. That's right. I mean, you have an idea, so, but I'm just gonna be excited for the unknowns. You're so worried about what's the, the final step. What's the, what's the, I gotta map it out first. You're ready to get everything, you're sharpening, you're sharpening the ax, you're trying to get perfect, but you just do it, you just go. And then on the journey, the connections, the people, just the miracles that happen along the way, that's what makes it special. All right, so we're going to talk about like my health hero's journey. And so, you know, when we're doing this, the main reason why we're doing this is to allow that any of you to, to give yourself permission to become the hero that you really were, that you were when you were a young kid. So my hero's journey in health was, and the reason why I did chiropractic and I think, you know, the reason why it became so epic in my life and, and helping people and now to this act three, it was in 1998 I won Mr. America, and I looked I looked to be what health was, right? I looked a certain way, my body fat was a certain way, I didn't drink, I didn't smoke, I ate right, exercised, and uh, I was a trainer, so I was paid to give people advice on all that stuff. So people came to me because they saw, like, well, he's a healthy guy, and he's going to help me get healthy. And then at 26, when I married my wife, Whitney, into our marriage, I started bleeding every time I went to the bathroom, and my wife saw me go from 230 pounds to 158 pounds. I was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, you know, I'm not, I always used to say, I'm not lining up at McDonald's every morning for breakfast and, and eating donuts for breakfast, like a lot of people, and I'm, and they're doing great. How come I have this disease that's, destroying my immune system's eating my colon away? And a week and a half away from surgery, he's like, you gotta go see my chiropractor. And I thought that was the most absurd, ridiculous, almost insulting thing I heard. My chiropractor, Dr. Roger, and he took pictures of my spine that no one did. Then he sent me down, he taught me how the body was able to function, heal, and operate. And he says, if there's any damage in the spine, shifting or alignment, putting pressure, irritating those nerves, it would be like a dimmer switch of life to those organs. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. And when I went back to look at my spine, my spine that should be straight up and down, it was straight and the bottom was like 20 degree curvature. It was, it was off 20 degrees, crushing the nerve roots of my spinal cord nerves to my digestive tract. But see, I had, even though I was shredded for shows, I never saw that. And I never felt back pain, that's the thing. You would think with that misalignment or damage you would feel back pain, but that's the thing, you don't feel pain. Does, no one died from back pain. No one died from neck pain. But I mean, they died in surgery for those, but they never died, like the, the, the feeling pain isn't the thing that you die from, it's the organ issue shutting down. So I never had a back issue, but my first symptom was ulcerative colitis. For someone else, they could have a back issue, or they're constipated, or they go in the bathroom too much, or there's infer infertility, or diabetes. So the symptoms are always the things that are fire alarms going off. So we don't want to cover symptoms and band-aid symptoms. We're going to get to the cause and find the cause. In my life, that's the way it's been. So now this next act that we'll talk about, you know, that's that's the same uh, that's the same way we're going at it. We make a decision. I got my family on board, and we're going to go until, and everybody will be able to see it happen.